mit Janine Johnson. Hello, good evening. It's one week to go until the new government's much anticipated budget. There are fears that 25 years of funding for Cornwall could be about to end if the Shared Prosperity Fund, which was brought in to replace EU funding, is scrapped. The economic impact could be huge. Here's our political editor, Martin Oates. Europe's oldest dry dock here in Penzance has seen some ups and downs during its 200-year history. Now it's definitely on the up, with ambitious plans to expand and build ships for the first time ever. Owner Jamie Murphy says a £2 million award from the Shared Prosperity Fund, the domestic replacement for Cornwall's pre-Brexit EU funding, has been essential to making it happen. High street banks simply do not support the sector. Um, the, the, the Shared Prosperity Fund was absolutely key uh, because you know, in a post-Brexit Cornwall uh, that there wasn't any major funding available for projects like this. But the Shared Prosperity Fund is due to end in less than six months' time. This is one of 142 projects across Cornwall to have benefited from a total of £137 million of shared prosperity funding. If the present government chooses not to continue with it in some way, shape or form, it'll be the first time in a quarter of a century that Cornwall hasn't received substantial, specific financial assistance. We do know this budget will be painful because the Prime Minister's told us so. And probably nobody's wincing more in anticipation than the small businesses who make up the backbone of the region's economy. It's so hard, this, you know, energy costs are through the roof. For my business, you know, milk costs, cheese costs, butter costs, butter keeps going up and up and up. So if, if you were to take a brief wish list to the, to the Chancellor, what, what would it be? Um, cheap utility bills, um, more realistic business rate charges, and stop talking the economy down. It's not as bad as I say it is. Budgets come and go with the regularity of the tides. One thing is certain, though. Decisions which will affect the lives of everybody here will all be taken 300 miles away up this railway line. So no, it's reporting there. An Avon and Somerset police inspector has appeared in court today, charged with a dozen child sex offences. Thomas Kettleborough of Western Supermare appeared before Exeter Magistrates Court but didn't enter a plea. The 35-year-old, who's been suspended since last summer, will appear at Exeter Crown Court next month. An illegal dog breeder from North Devon has been fined more than £17,000 for producing four litters of puppies from three dogs over 12 months. Caroline Watson admitted four charges of breeding Cocker Spaniels and German Shepherd Crosses without a licence from her home in Hunchshaw near Torrington last year. At Barnstable Magistrates Court, the 51-year-old denied making £19,000 selling the puppies. The government today launched what it says is the biggest review of the water industry since privatisation. Southwest MPs told the Environment Secretary that urgent action is needed to stop sewage flooding into the streets of our region's towns. In Truro and Falmouth, my constituency, as well as sewage in our bathing waters this week, we've had sewage on the streets in Penryn. The party opposite cut funding to the regulator back in 2015. Could the Secretary of State please confirm that the role of the regulator will be completely reset by this review? Landfill site in the Devon countryside have been thrown out. Developers wanted permission to leave in place material that had been illegally dumped at the site near Tiverton, as well as to bring in thousands of tonnes of waste over the next eight years. It's been confirmed a Grade 2 listed church in Cornwall is going to be demolished for safety reasons. St Paul's in Truro has been shut to the public since 2008 over concerns the tower is unsound. Seb Noble reports. St Paul's Church has stood at the gateway to Truro since the Victorians. Its buildings have been living on a prayer, but not for much longer. Well, this church dates back to the 1840s, but there hasn't been a service held here for more than 15 years now. That's because there are massive structural issues with concerns that the tower could be at risk of collapsing. The estimated repair bills thought to run into the millions of pounds, which is why church bosses have been forced into taking this decision. 
A thriving congregation used to pack these pews before they were forced to leave. A public consultation will now take place over the plans to demolish it, a chance for people to have their say and mourn. This is a time for us to say we have tried. We've really, really tried to keep this church open and look after it, but it's just not the right thing for this building. The plans will need Cornwall Council's permission because of its Grade 2 listing. Seth Noble, BBC Spotlight, Truro. On to sport and football. In the Championship tonight, Plymouth Argyle's poor away form continued. They lost to Millwall 1-0. Let's hope for better news with the weather. Here's Dan. Thanks, Jimmy. Hello, good evening. The high pressure, which brought us mainly fine weather today, is starting to drift away to the east behind it. The wind's picking up, bringing in some mild air from the south, but a low pressure system developing will turn it wetter and windier for Friday. Overnight tonight, some clear spells, at least at first, more cloud building in from the west during the night. So temperatures generally holding in double figures, a little bit lower further to the east where we keep the clearer skies for longer. And a breezy night tonight, so mist and fog shouldn't be such an issue into tomorrow morning. But rather grey, rather cloudy. The cloud perhaps just thick enough for the odd spot of light, rain and drizzle in a place or two as well. But equally, sun holes in that cloud will allow for some bright and sunny spells to develop too. And tomorrow's temperatures still very mild, despite the fresh or strong winds coming up from a southerly direction. It's still reaching 17 or 18 Celsius. Now, more rain starting to move in overnight Thursday into Friday. So it will be a wet start on Friday. Windy too, becoming a bit drier and brighter later in the day. And a few showers through the weekend, but a lot of dry weather takes the well. That's all from the late team. Good night.